Hello, great search brought to you by DigiKey Data Fruit. Thank you, DigiKey. Every single week, Lady Ada uses her power of engineering to help you. Yes, you find the things you want on digikey.com. Lady Ada, what is the great search of the week this week? Okay, I am continuing my design for a DMX feather wing that JP asked me to design. And if you want it similar to the MIDI feather wing with like both input and output port, um, something really simple you can stack on top of a feather to make uh, something that connects to a DMX light like this one with like the two DMX ports on the back or it can emulate one, it can act as a DMX light. And so, um, you know, probably this was inspired by the fact that we did a um, INMPI where we covered uh, this Max Linear RS-485 transceiver. So DMX, the lighting protocol, uses RS-485 underneath as like the transport mechanism. So the DMX part itself is taken care of by um, the Arduino or CircuitPython or whatever. Like it does the, you know, you have to like do the data enable and whatever and figure it out and send the, it's basically your data, but with this like kind of encoding stuff. So um, what most people use, cause you know, the first thing I looked at first, like there's a lot of DMX accessories for Arduino. So there was an official Tinkerkit which is kind of like twins of Arduino, friends of Arduino, and they made a shield and they used these connectors. And so the last um, great search, what I did was find the connectors. I, you know, specced out some through hole connectors that I really liked. I got found these Amphenol ones, they're pretty sweet. Um, so that's, that's done. So next step is to do the transceiver parts. So again, you know, it pretty much uses UART, so you have to use the hardware UART pins. I'm not you know, worried about that. You want something that takes the GPIO, the UART, and then outputs to here. One thing I did kind of notice as I was doing kind of like investigation of the, there's a lot of DMX shields, there's a lot of like low cost ones, but a lot of them are very strongly based on this original Tinkerkit design. But I noticed that on the back, or as a warning somewhere, they say like, um, warning, you know, I don't know if you see this, warning the shield does not provide ground loop protection, ESD protection, or isolation. And, and as I looked into it, it's like, oh yeah, that's actually a really common request for DMX accessories. They're supposed to be optically galvan galvanically isolated. So, you know, if you look at this um, light, the power comes not through the cable, but through power and like it might be on a different circuit um it might be on like a cable that's like 50 meters long these inputs i don't know i haven't opened this box but ideally they're optically isolated and so the signal coming into the lamp um is powered so that the transceivers are powered by this and the voltage levels that come in here you know they they drive an opto isolator or galvanic isolator much like midi actually um, so that's interesting to note, but a lot of these shields don't do that. So I was like, well, let me look at what it would take to do some isolation. Um, if you're going to isolate, you have to do both the power and signal. So it makes it a little more complicated. Power is a little bit more annoying to isolate than signal because you can't, you know, the transceivers need not a ton of power, but probably like, you know, hundred milliamps or so. Um, and so you have to set up this whole like AC converter to whatever and so there's on chip ones maybe we'll cover that next great search um so the first thing i did is i just searched for rs485 because like i said there's no such thing as like a dmx transceiver it's an rs485 transceiver and dmx is the protocol on top of it and there's a lot of transceivers um available um as i mentioned the most common is this max 485 and then like every company made their own versions there's the sp485 and there's going to be like you know, other like the UA485, and there's just like a ton of them. The ST485 from ST, like all pin compatible, very similar CAN bus where everyone's got their like 1050, 1051 transceiver. Um, but what I want to do, well, first off, let's just look at the active ones. And second, I definitely want, well, I want something that's a transceiver. If you just look at like, you know, the transceivers. Um, all of them do 485. I don't care about 422. I can handle that, you know, some other thing. If you do transceivers, you'll notice there's a lot, and the cost is quite low, because, uh, again, they're not isolated. So this is, like, 
Tejin. This is some marketplace. Maybe I'll get rid of the marketplace so I can look at just stuff that's stocked directly. Hold on. I'm thinking. Uh, Max Linear, do a lot. Three Peak, um, some other companies. ST, but they're all going to be very, very low cost. They're going to be like under a dollar or so. But um, like I said, they're all this SOIC 8 non isolated. Now, you can do the isolation with an opto isolator, but I thought it'd be kind of neat because I did see the option oh, down here for type. Instead of transceiver, let me cancel that. And I can select an isolated transceiver. So I thought it was kind of neat is some of them have the isolation built in. Not that many. So you saw like 55. Um, but there are a few. Let's look for ones that are normally stocking so you can actually get them. And it looks like TI has a couple. Not surprising. They, they have a lot of transceivers and they, they know how to do isolation. So it's more expensive, but it's going to be a lot smaller. And what's neat is that um, the isolation is done on chip. In fact, I then looked, let me close like, got like a bazillion, a bazillion tabs open. They actually have a whole category. I like sometimes, especially if you're like, oh, I wanna use a family of chips, you go to the website of the company. So in this case, TI actually has a whole section just about isolated 485 because again, you know, you're supposed to do it. And they have, um, what I like is they have this like cool little matrix. So the DMX protocol uses five, 500 kilobits per second. So anything here will work. You don't even need like the highest end here. Um, and they have ones even that have an integrated DC DC converter. Some have an integrated transformer. So you could use that, you know, as part of your, your power transformation stuff. Um, so, the ice, ISO 1412, let's just open another DigiQ tab real fast. ISO 1412, oh, sorry. ISO, this is ISO, ISO W. There you go. So they are stocked. They're pretty expensive, so $6. Might not be a bad idea to not necessarily get the isolation for the DC done on chip. Maybe I can um, find a more like cobbled together version of the power isolator. But I like the idea of having the, like the opto isolators are like big and chunky and the price increase is not that high to get, um, it is a little bit more expensive. It's like a dollar more, but I would have to spend that much money on the isolator. So it's like, it's, you know, the build material is about the same cost. So let's look at the data sheet. And this family, oh, actually interesting, this is five volt. Hold on, I forgot, this is a feather and so I don't have five volts available. So let me, let me pair out some of these options. So I wanna make sure that it can run off of 3.3 volts, which it can. So I'm just gonna skip that one. And then, yeah, that's fine. Okay, just a couple didn't get put through. So this is, this looks like it can run from 3.3, but then the data rate, so this one, 200 kilobits per second, remember uh, DMX wants 500. So let's go back up. Sorry, I got to select from all the ones except for the 200 kilobits per second. Of course, the cheapest one is like, you know, I can't do DMX. Um, so the three peak one, and then this family, the ISO 143. So yeah, the two, 250. So let's look at data sheet. Close this one, close this one. I mean, this is what normally you would do. You'd have everything opto isolated this way, which, and then, you know, you have a DC converter. This is from a, a design from 2015, so almost 10 years old. Um, okay, so this family, there's a bunch of them. They all have galvanic isolation, which again is kind of cool. And then, um, they have different data rates and some are half duplex and some are full duplex. I do want full. I want both directions. So let me do 
full. Great. And then if I sort by price, the cheapest is the 1432 or the 1452. Look at here, the two differences is the speed. Do you want 50 megabits per second or 12? I'm going to be, I mean, if the price is the same, maybe it doesn't matter. Yeah, it doesn't really matter. But still, I don't need, you know, the, when you have higher SLU, usually a little bit more current uh, to drive it. And I don't want to have to spend more power than I need. So I'm going to go with the ISO 1432. So isolated, it's a little bit chunkier, uh, but it's not $6. So it's like I have a little bit of budget, a couple bucks maybe to get um, a separate DC-DC isolator for the three or five volt power supply. So I'll work on that. Maybe that'll be my next great search because I've, I've never had a separated, uh, isolated power supply, but they do come in handy. I've, you know, we have, um, you know, we use one for the USB isolator that we stock. So I'm wondering if I can restock it. There's a USB isolator. Now that I think of it. Oh, you know, I wonder if I could read, because I have this, it has a power supply chip and the isolator chip. I wonder if I can reuse that power supply chip, because I think I actually have a bunch of these stocked. I think this is the power, yeah, this is the data isolator and this is the power isolator. So we'll see, maybe next time I'll look at this chip or alternatives. Um, but for the data side, I'm gonna go with this, the ISO 1432. This is my pick for the great search. That is the great search.